Asalaamu As Alaikum. Today we're going to talk about the Big Bang. Let's uh, get into it. We all heard of the Big Bang Theory, but what exactly is it all about? In this video, I will explain the sequence of cosmological events that led to Earth's creation and point out that the specific verses in the Quran that tell us how the universe was created. How was the universe created? How was it came to be is the question. It perhaps the greatest mystery and the root of all the others. Humanity's grand set question, how did it begin? What is the consciousness? What is dark matter? Dark energy, gravity, where did it all stem from it? That's one of the biggest questions. And when I didn't know nothing about God, these were my questions too. So I got to know God and here I am making a video. All other mysteries lie downstream of this question, said Ann Jewin, the author and window of the astronomer Carl Sagan. He said, it matters to me because I am human and do not like not knowing. That makes sense. That actually makes sense when he said that. Lots of theories about the origins of our universe have come and gone until one theory in the particular come along that physicists and cosmologists could agree on. Yes, they agreed on it, of course, because there is scientific evidence to support it. And you may have heard of it. It's called the Big Bang Theory. Yes. You know, um, so the founders of this theory are two scientists from the 1920s. Yes. So their names were Georges and Alexander Friedman. You can guys can look this up. They both used Einstein's theory of relativity. Um, let's see. To prove that the universe is in a constant state of expansion, you know, then in the 1929, the American astronomer Edwin Hubble confirmed this theory again after observing evidence that virtually all clusters of galaxies appear to be moving away from all the other clusters, which also indicates that the entire universe is expanding. Physicists uh, agree that the theory is sound because the universe is, in fact, still expanding now. If you open the Quran and read through all the verses that speaks about the origin of the universe, you would find that it confirms what physicists have been saying about the same topic. But the Quran, the, but the Quran was written for over 1400 years ago. For example, all right, so for example, in chapter 51, verse 47, it says, and 
it is we, God, have built the universe with our creative power and verily it is we, God, who are steadily expanding it. 1400 years ago, what we know about the universe is that space was created first and gave birth to particles, galaxies, stars, and earth, and you and me. Quran also addresses the order in which various things were created in a manner of consistent with uh, science has discovered, for example, in chapter 18, verse 51 says, I, God, did not make them witnesses to the creation of heavens and the earth or the creation of themselves. The universe expanded from very high density and exploded in gravitational pools. Yes. The same gravitational waves from those uh, colliding black holes in space that was through the Earth causing the universe to stretch and expand over and over, over again. Yes. In uh, chapter 41 of the Quran, verse 10 says, In four days he made in the earth what anchors from high above it and put baraka in it, and equally a measured of substance. Uh, sustenance of its dwellers for those who ask. Let's break down the meaning of the verse. When God says he made in the earth what anchors from high above it, he is referring to the gravitational pull. It, the, the gravitational waves, I mean, that are coming back from those colliding black holes in space that act as gravitational anchors to anchor the Earth and anchor things to the Earth. Yes. Then God says he put Baraka in it. Baraka is a word that people commonly use for blessings, but it has a deeper meaning. Yes, it has a deeper meaning to it. It means to grow and uh, increase in value above and beyond expectations. And then emphasizing that the earth started small but constantly grew larger and larger and larger and larger, right? As we can see today, right? A strange type of matter called the expansion of the universe in its early stages. This matter behaves um, very differently from the matter that we are familiar with today. Yes. Um, because instead of attracting other matter, it repels it. So, this has led physicists to call it antimatter. Um, and sounds to me like an antisocial matter. Yeah, that's what it really sounds to me like. Antimatter actually disobeys energy. 
that's what it takes. And and the momentum conservation, it disobeys symmetric charge of conjugation and uh, parity. And uh, it disobeys our current one directional time arrow and it disobeys casualty. Casualty. Because the early universe was filled with this type of self repelling disobedient matter. Everything would be pushing against everything else, and that would account for one of one that gave birth to the universe. Matter and antimatter um, particles are always produced in pairs. Uh, okay, so. If they come in contact, they're in pairs. After that, uh, incest, uh, gas, clumping, anchoring together, which eventually led to the formation of the stars and even galaxies. The formation of stars then paved the way for the formation of everything else in our universe. You see, when a massive star with massive several times that of the sun reaches the end of its life, it compresses and explodes like a supernova. And if it appears that exploding stars or supernovas, right, um, are extremely efficient at producing the dust or the first solid particles that later forms Earth, like planets, rocks, and people. Yep. Okay, so let's see. Let's go with um, verse 11 of that same chapter in the Quran addresses these points. When it says, Then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke, and said to the heavens, and the herb come into being, willing to obey or disobey. They both said we are willing to obey from this verse. We can derive many things. Firstly, that space was created before earth. As God says, he created the earth while heaven was in smoke. When God says, while it was smoke about the heaven, it's confirmed scientific belief that the smoke resulting from the exploding stars of the supernova existed in space for a long time before forming the rocky embryo of the earth. So essentially the earth was a giant lump of a, this cosmic dust anchored by gravity, right? So, you know, it was this cosmic dust. You know, life was anchored by gravity that constantly grew larger and larger and larger. Once it became large enough, gravity caused the earth to become rounded, form, forming what is called a rocky embryo. And after 100 million years of the rocky embryo growing, 
Voyola, uh, we have a uh, planet Earth. The Quran even alludes to the matter and antimatter that existed in the universe in this verse when he it, it says, willing to obey or disobey, and then concludes by telling us that it is matter, not antimatter, that managed to survive and still exists to this day when it says they said we are willing to obey. When astrophysicists joke, they say supernovas had bad habits, right? Because they but belch out, uh, whatever, you know what I mean, uh, huge quantities of smoke known as cosmic dust. Dr. Loretta Doom from uh, Cardiff University, right, uh, describes cosmic dust by saying, cosmic dust consists of tiny particles of solids and materials floating around in space between stars. It's not as like the dust in your house, okay? But it's more uh, to like cigarette smoke. You know, you know, uh, uh, cosmic dust was also responsible for, you know, blocking the light emitted from stars and galaxies, meaning that for the first 380,000 years or so, our universe was essentially uh, too up equipped uh, to shine. Physicist Amira Bartos from Columbia University states gravitational waves arrive at Earth long before any light does which is exactly what verse 12 of chapter 41 indicates. He made in each heaven its affairs and adorned the nearest heaven with lamps. Think about that, right? By using the uh, the lamps as an analogy for light. This verse reflects that the fact that the universe was in darkness in its early stages, it further reflects the sequence of events we discussed earlier. As God mentioned what anchors first, then mentioned the light, implying that gravitational waves uh, arrived at Earth long before any light did, just as physicists uh, such as Irma uh, Bartos confirms over 1400 years ago later. So, please subscribe to my channel for further videos, hit that bell, so you know, you'll not miss a video. I think I'm pretty original here. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullah,